the bonfire behind us, um, Protestants um, and Loyalists, Loyalists me referring to those that are loyal to the Queen of the United Kingdom, um, are constructed from late May onwards, um, and they are um, set fire, they're, they're lit on the 11th night in July, and often you will see um, an Irish tricolour flag um, from the Republic of Ireland on the top, and sometimes even an emblem or a photo of the Pope that they will burn. And it's really a, a significant kind of identification process that Protestants would use to kind of um, show their, their loyalism and patriotism to the, the Queen. We start off with lighting the bonfires at 12, which gets into the 12th morning. The whole 12th of July is a whole celebration from 12 o'clock midnight right through till you have the orange men on the, on the, on the 12th, you know. I mean, I live in the middle of the Falls Road, so they won't march through there at all, like, you know what I mean? But uh, there's other areas that have to go through, basically have to put up with them as marching through their area, singing their songs and stamping their feet to such. So. It's not acceptable in the, the eyes of a Catholic, really, that they're marching through the areas. This is a Protestant area. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but just over that fence is a Catholic area. Yeah. And this is the peace line. This fence is meant to keep us apart. Okay. So we get, we get bricks, bottles, stones, golf balls, everything over every night. We get, we, get, we get all this trouble every night. Basically, the people over here wanted us out of this area, mm -hmm. okay? Um, they wanted to be uh, part of their community, but we weren't prepared for that. We didn't want that, and we stood our ground. And that's why we call it Always British and Loyalist, because this, this, is, this is our community. Isn't that right, love? Yeah. See? We, we want to live here, but they didn't want us to live here. Fortunately, they were not successful, and uh, and we still live here, and we're proud to live here. People here, for some reason, I don't know where it happens everywhere else, but they very much hold on to their history. Up on the, the Catholic side, I mean. I mean, they hold on to the, the hunger strike and they don't forget about what they went through to get where they are today, you know. Better housing, better education, equal opportunities, human rights. So, I mean, they probably fought so hard to get it that they're not prepared just to pretend it didn't happen. You know, they want to hold on to the, the sacrifice that the men made. People said to me for years during the trouble, why don't you go and live somewhere else? And I'm thinking, well, that's just not the way we're brought up. You know, if somebody's bullying you, what do you do? Do you, do you move away? You'd end up moving out into every different country. You don't. If somebody's bullying one of your kids in school, you don't pull them out of school. You tell them to fight back, stand up for the person that he is. You don't let people walk over the, over the top of you. And that's, and if, on both sides, if it's happening to one side or the other side, both sides here are so alike that they'll stand up for themselves and that's where they're meeting in the middle. Right? It's definitely different than our culture, but I mean, we have we have these things too. So, just a different a different conflict and a different group of people. And we're going to go and and look at one of the peace walls, which separates the Catholic nationalist community from the loyalist Protestant community, um, because a lot of the communities now are beginning to to have um, joint kind of discussion and, and they're able to communicate well with each other but there still are some areas that that is not happening right now and so this peace wall separates those communities so that they cannot um, fight with each other. So I know it's only bricks and mortar at the minute but it's like a security blanket but bring that down too quick and you'll and shatter people's confidences. Well. You know it's living there a long time but I think if you build up two communities together, start building it first. My kids and I are, are, are you know, are at that age, didn't know what the troubles was. Uh -huh. 
but they would still say derogatory comments that would come from me. So that's my fault. So I think it's a school for mixed. So start with the children and bring it from there. That, that there would probably be an uh, 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 thing. Because the, the parents reflect on. You know, so. But we're getting there. So 300 years of history. How are you going to kick that out of someone's head? You have to start the family, I think. You have to start with, with kids like this. And try and, and, try and teach them not, not to be annoyed at people like that. Mm -hmm. That's going to take generations. Mm -hmm.